following is a production of Learfield Sports. This copyrighted telecast is the property of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, an affiliate of Learfield Sports, LLC, under rights granted by the University of Maine. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast or any part of it without the express written consent of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, is prohibited. This legal disclaimer is brought to you by Lanham Blackwell & Baber, proud supporter of the Black Bears. If you have any legal questions, visit them at LanhamBlackwell.com. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Black Bear Insider. I'm your host, Brian Sullivan. We've got a fantastic show on tap for you this week. We're talking football on the Insider. We've got head coach Jack Cosgrove dropping by to talk about his Black Bear start to the 2015 campaign. Plus, his quarterback, Dan Collins, is going to speak with us and take us inside the film room as he prepares week in and week out. It's how he gets the edge this you don't want to miss. Plus, it's the 50th anniversary of the Black Bears heading to the Tangerine Bowl. We'll take a look back at that magical season. Not to mention, we're going to speak with a student athlete group called Maine Athletes Against Violence. Find out how they're trying to make a difference on campus and in the world that surrounds them. A visit to Compliance Corner and a look at the upcoming schedule. This is the Black Bear Insider. Black Bear Insider is brought to you by Lanham Blackwell and Baber, Division of Lifelong Learning, Main Savings, EBS Building Supplies, Fisher Plows, and Digital Workshop. No matter what your game is, indoors or out, the Student Recreation and Fitness Center at the University of Maine is your place to play, work out, relax, and have fun. The Rec Center has state-of-the-art cardio and weight training equipment, a pool, spa, and sauna, a running track, and more than 60 fitness classes a week. Or take your game outside with the Maine Bound Adventure Center. Hit the climbing or bouldering wall. Learn how to kayak or go rock climbing. Whatever game you like, the Student Recreation and Fitness Center is your place to play. Under the bright lights of your playing field, one performer continues to shine. The Fisher Extreme V. With durable X bracing, the Extreme V carries the load. With precision passes, the power to bust through, the maximum protection of the Fisher trip edge, and the brightest lights available. Fisher, your business, our passion. Learn more at vplowfacts.com. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider, now joined by Maine football head coach Jack Cosgrove. Jack, thanks a lot for stopping by. Great to be here, Brian. Thanks for having me. Now, one thing I want to talk about is a big win against Albany. You know, you go down there, I would say, not in desperate need of a win, but you come home 2-1 and one in the CAA as opposed to 1-2. and two. How big is that? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a huge win for us, I think, in, in a lot of ways. Not only in the standings and all those type of things, but just, you know, the locker room. You know, the young men that, uh, that inhabit that locker room needed a, needed a win. We had... Uh, uh, shown s bits and pieces of uh, being a good football team throughout the course of the year, but we never really put it all together. And you know, coming after, uh, you know, right after a, a butt kick, and uh, we had administered to us by you know Richmond down there. Uh, it was really good to see the guys respond. And uh, you know, it's it's a tough trip too. It's 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 not an easy travel. And uh, uh, the, the the guys met all the challenges: the challenge of travel, the challenge of the game, and uh, and all of the things that go into really allowing you to feel good about a win. You mentioned it a little bit, you see it on the practice field, but it's got to be nice to know that you've got a 39-7 to in-conference win in you to put it out there, you know, to see it play out on the field. It's got to feel good. Yeah, the, the, the atmosphere there is tremendous. I mean, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that our guys are excited to play. Uh, Albany has done some tremendous things in and around their athletic program. I think, as we all know, their basketball programs and, uh, are excellent in America East. And, uh, that campus has really grown in the five years that I've seen it uh, up close and personal. We're playing them on a regular basis now. 
It was a great game day atmosphere. Their stadium is nice. They got the hill with all the students on it. There just was an electricity there that I think helped our players. I mean, it, was, it was really nice to be the, the guys with the, the white uniforms on, walking into a, a place full of purple and, and gold and feeling the challenge of, hey, let's play a great football game. Now, some people love travel. You know, personally, uh, I'm a homebody. I, like, I want to be at home. Now, you've, you and your team have led a jet set lifestyle out of the gate here. What, four out of the first five on the road, and now you actually get to to come home and get a taste of that home cooking. That's got to feel pretty good. It's going to be a little different, Brian. Yeah, we've had two flights and two bus trips uh, to this point, you know, sandwiched around a, a home game with Rhode Island, which seems like it was a long time ago that we played here. Uh, it's exciting. Our players are excited about homecoming coming up this weekend. Uh, you know, the 150th anniversary of the University of Maine homecoming. Uh, uh, and also uh, our 65 team, which is a 50 year anniversary uh, event for them coming back. But as you look at this year's squad, how have you seen them grow from, you know, when they showed up in August to where we are now in October? Uh, the most, you know, important thing I've seen is our resiliency. You know, that uh, we have a, uh, an ability to keep going forward despite some of the challenges that we're facing. And uh, I was really, um, impressed with that on Saturday. You know, the attitude they brought to the game was outstanding and uh, everybody contributed. I think it's, you know, when you talk about the game of football and you talk about team, you talk about making contributions and we had them throughout the, uh, the game. You know, the defense, the offense, the special teams were all outstanding. Individuals who are high profile guys for us played very well. Uh, but some of the guys that you don't hear about so much played played outstanding. And then we added some new guys to the list, you know, the emergence of Joe Fitzpatrick, you know, coming in at running back and Darius Benders. They both did a great job for us. You just like to see those things happen as the game evolves and you, you feel like your team is kind of feeding off of the excitement of the contributions and, and growing as you go forward. Now as a position that's always going to be a focal point, it's the quarterback position. You get a nice game out of Dan Collins, but also you've got another guy, Drew Belcher, who can do some good things on the field. What does it mean to you as a coach in a program to have two guys who you can see perform out there uh, and you can have some confidence in? I've said this all along, that you know, we're blessed to have two guys who have won CAA games prior to even this year starting. You know, both played last year. And, uh, you know, won football games during our 2014 season for us. So uh, the competition was as close as I've ever seen. It was Treister, Smith, those, that kind of yeah. thing that we've had in the past. And, you know, when we made the decision to go with Danny, it wasn't, there wasn't all that much distance. In the, in the, so we had to keep Drew involved, and, and we have. And I think he's added a, a nice touch to our offense. Um, and I think it's healthy for our football team to have two guys active. Uh, you know, Drew came in Saturday and, and he played very well as well. So it's, it's just, I think, a bonus for us right now, um, you know, at that position to have what I think is probably better depth than any other team in the league. All right, guys, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck this weekend. When we come back on the Black Bear Insider, we're going to keep talking football. Quarterback Dan Collins joins us. That's when we return. We could move some investments, but your real problem is your checking account. It's awful. You get nothing in return, and you pay monthly fees. Doesn't everybody? Not if we move you into the red. I thought red meant negative. Not that kind of red. Red wallet checking from Maine Savings. Red wallet is free checking with monthly rewards and ATM fee refunds. Red wallet offers rewards of high interest, cash back, or even tunes. Open your free red wallet account today, only at Maine Savings. EBS Building Supplies knows time is the most valuable resource you have. That's why they offer free delivery anywhere in their service area. Fast, convenient, and free. That's the EBS way. So whether you're a professional contractor or a do-it-yourself homeowner, no delivery is too small or too big. And custom ordering is always available. Use EBS free delivery to make your life easier and your home improvement project complete faster. EBS Building Supplies. Can do. Just ask. Getting your education through UMaine Online offers all the advantages you'd expect. Access to the state's premier public research institution. World-class faculty who are leaders in their fields. Active learning and interaction with your professors and classmates. A flexible schedule where and when you need it. Online student services dedicated to your success. <laughs> UMaine Online, where you want to be. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider, now joined by Maine football starting quarterback Dan Collins. Dan, thanks a lot for stopping by. You got it. Now, things are going pretty good for you. I've seen a lot of progression on the field. Tell me how you've gotten to the point where you currently stand here. 
Uh, I think, you know, just teamwork and those guys, you know, really believing in me as far as a leader goes. I mean, you know, having these guys rally around me is just, you know, it's just great and you know, just becoming a big uh, part of the team and playing together, I think, is, is what, uh, you know, got me the confidence, you know, that, that last win was great, so just got to keep rolling. Now, I know we're going to go into the film room a little bit later here, but what have you seen on the game? Has it slowed down for you a little bit as you've gotten a little more experience under your belt? Oh, definitely. I think experience is everything. I mean, uh, you know, seeing different defenses and seeing, you know, different looks each week is a uh, huge, you know, huge key in growing as, you know, as far as a quarterback and, you know, seeing the different, different stuff teams do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of like been there, done that thing. You know, it's definitely playing a role in, in out on the field. And as you delve into the playbook with Coach Burgoyne's offense, it's got to be a lot more helpful as you become more assimilated to it, you know, knowing where guys are going to be. Has that helped you a lot? Oh, yeah. I mean, everything's about timing, you know, and be doing, doing the things right in practice and, you know, seeing the right things like, like we do all week of, you know, good job on the scout team. As far as our scout guys, you know, they're great all week. So, you know, we do a good job in seeing, you know, different stuff that we're going to see, you know, on game day. So we, we, do, we do a good job of that. And, or we put it together. Now, as we stand here, this is a team that came off a tough loss against Richmond, but really responded well with a nice victory against Albany. What went right in that game? Uh, I think preparation. We did a, we had a, like I said, we had a great week of practice all, you know, all week. We were really preparing, you know, for, for a great win down there. We, you know, we, we talked about it, you know, we wanted to go down there and win and we knew we could. So, you know, we went down there and we did our thing. I think we played together and that's, you know, and, and great outcome for, the, for our team. And, for the rest of the season. Now, as you navigate this conference schedule, do you see this as a team that can make it on to the tournament and get into that, that playoffs? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, I love I love playing with these guys. I think we have a great, you know, special bond, great thing going. So we just got to keep the ball rolling and keep it going. Now, on the offensive side of the ball, where do you see the strength of this team? Uh, I think communication. You know, uh, I think we all communicate well at the line, and you know, when we do a good job of that, we can be really good. But as far as uh, you know, wide receivers, a quarterback, uh, running back, you know, all the skill positions. I think just, you know, playing together as far as, you know, everybody doing their right job, doing their right thing, what they have to do with, you know, at the certain times we get the right play call and, we, you know, we, we make big plays. Sure, and there has to be a certain amount of communication between yourself and another fellow quarterback, Drew Belcher. What's the relationship between you, like, between you guys? Oh, he's a great guy. I mean, he's a great, great quarterback. I mean, we're just working together, just trying to make, trying to make the wins, trying to get the team together. All comes down to W's. Oh, yeah. All right, thanks, Dan. When we come back on the Black Bear Insider, we're going to take a visit to Compliance Corner. Don't go anywhere. Hey Black Bear fans, this is Brett Baber with Lanham, Blackwell & Baber, and this is Compliance Corner. We're here to help you understand some of the most misunderstood rules and regulations that commonly affect our Black Bear athletes and programs. Today I'd like to talk to you about what defines a booster 
and who a booster is. A booster is anyone who has ever promoted the athletic department, provided services for UMaine Athletics, made any financial contribution to any team or the athletic department, purchased season tickets to any Black Bear program, works or worked for the athletic department, or is the spouse of someone who has done so, and has otherwise promoted the athletic department or program in any manner. Here is the most important thing to remember. Once you've been identified as a booster, you retain that title indefinitely. So if you have any questions about this or any other compliance questions, feel free to contact the Black Bear Compliance Office at 207-581-1537 or visit goblackbears.com slash information slash compliance. This has been Compliance Corner, brought to you by Lanham, Blackwell & Baber. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider. Back in 1965, the Maine Black Bear football team made it all the way to the Tangerine Bowl, perhaps one of the greatest seasons in the program's history. We spoke with several members of that team, and here's what they had to say. The campus of the University of Maine in Orono was snow covered when word came that Maine would play East Carolina College in sunny Orlando, Florida in the Tangerine Bowl. Next thing you know, we're invited to play East Carolina, and uh, we're practicing in the old field house. It was snow on the ground and running the wing teeth. So anyway, we uh, we got ready for them and uh, went down to Orlando to play East Carolina. Playing some of these away schools when we had to go to Tampa and places like that just hadn't happened before. They played where they could bust to, and that was about it. So some of the players on the team had never been on a plane before. It was the people that made it up. They weren't the biggest, they weren't the fastest, and they weren't the strongest. But they played together uh, like the best that you could ever do. It's five minutes to halftime, third down, tailback Dave Hughes, number 43, starting around his own left end. As he moves toward the left, he is thrown back at the seven yard line on a diving tackle by number 24, Norm Tarnoff. The shame of thing, we're in that ball game a little bit, and then Dick Devine got hurt. And he was the uh, kind of the motivator of our offense, and uh, things came kind of out, of out of control in the second half. But uh, uh, we had a great experience. It's a great group of guys. And we were a real team. Plus, we had two superstars in John Hewitt and Dick Devine, the quarterback. Uh, we had, they were key to our success. It was a very cohesive team. Everybody put the team first. We had terrific coaches. And we were just well prepared for every game. Second and seven. Alexander pitches out to Richardson. Rushed by the main end, Al Riley. But he gets away. Knocked out of bounds by Charlie McDonald. It's part of who I am. It's part of my identity. It's something I always, you know, think highly of. And, and really am thankful that I was part of it. A proud team. Maine may have been out of its class on the field, but certainly not in the hearts of the many friends they've made during their week in Orlando. We just had a great experience and uh, it was a wonderful time. It was like another family, really. You know, when I look back over the years, the people that have been instrumental besides your parents are your coaches. And these guys were outstanding, you know, folks to work with. Well, it's always uh, meant a lot to me. I think it's, I've always taken pride in the fact that I'm, I'm from Maine and originally and I've stayed in Maine. My companies are in Maine. Uh, and my, uh, most of my children live in Maine as well. So we're maniacs, and, uh, but we love it. I probably d didn't know coming here what it might mean to me, but since then, as the time has gone by and you're supporting the team and it's consistent uh, effort year after year, uh, seems to add to what it means for all former players. And I hope future players feel that way too. Here on the University of Maine's campus, it's apparent that student athletes have their eyes on making a difference, not only on campus, but in the community that surrounds them. When we come back on The Insider, we're going to speak with a student group called Maine Athletes Against Violence. This you won't want to miss. A wave of game day excitement is rolling into Dunkin'. Taste the new Tailgater breakfast sandwich stacked with smoked sausage, fire roasted peppers and onions. America runs on Dunkin'. Oh, wait, wait. I'm gonna need you to ring these all up separately, please. 
separately. Oh, seriously, with the dime thing again? What? I earn a dime every time I swipe. Now hand me those socks. Nope, just one at a time. With Make Sense Checking from Gorham Savings Bank, you earn 10 cents on all debit card purchases that post and clear. Apply online in as little as five minutes. Thank you. Another dime. This fall at Dunkin' Donuts, get lost in pumpkin. Pick up your favorite pumpkin-flavored beverages and baked treats like the new pumpkin cheesecake square while they're still here. America runs on Dunkin'. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider. We're now going to turn our attention to a student athlete group called Maine Athletes Against Violence, headed up by Dr. Sandra Karen. This group is all about making a difference in the world that surrounds them. Take a look. One out of five. One in five women. One in every five women will experience sexual assault. We know that it's an important issue and one that needs to be addressed. What's been missing for a long time is the opportunity for men to be involved. Male Athletes Against Violence is a unique peer education program that involves men in issues of anti-violence. Unlike most peer ed programs that are co-ed, this one is unique because it offers the opportunity for men to stand up and be involved. Our biggest goal is kind of to put a stop and um, to prevent any domestic violence, any um, sexual assaults or any bullying kind of within the community and we all have different roles and we try to contribute to uh, putting an end to those things. I think that involving male athletes counters a stereotype. I think that we do see a lot in the media, uh, the negative, men are abusive, male athletes are abusive, and this is one way to counter the stereotype. You know, this is just not about being a student athlete. This is also about being a young man on a college campus and being a young man of influence on your, uh, you know, the, uh, your peers and, and those around you. So I think it's been something that uh, it's really been neat to see, something that brings a tremendous amount of pride. A lot of what the men do in the program is community outreach, trying to be available for events on campus or doing workshops in the residence halls, talking directly to small groups of students. When we're walking around campus and we see things that's going on that's violence, we, we step up and be leaders and don't just sit there and just let it allow it to happen. We say something. We're role models with people who people look up to and they seeing us do the right thing. I'm pretty sure they'll do the right thing. I feel like that with that big platform, it kind of gives us a lot of leeway to really reach out to people. I mean, if they look up to us, it's something that can really, you know, spread throughout the campus. When they kind of see um, these role models or these kind of status quo athletes in the community, especially a small town like Orono, they're definitely watching, they're definitely seeing what we're doing, so we want to try to paint the right picture, and how to treat people. We want to kind of get out of the social norm and really challenge people to, to act the right way. You know, growing up, my mom was always a, she was treated like a queen. You know, that's how he started my dad, treat my mom like a queen, so we all do the same. So I feel like just by me, talking to younger kids, like when we go to schools, that's when they learn, that's, that's the time for them to learn and to get the, you know, the right habits. We hear study after study talking about how issues around assault, let's say particularly sexual assault, are at epidemic proportions. And for years and years we've had women standing up. So it's nice to have an opportunity to allow men to stand up and lead. I'd say the other thing is just bullying it. We've seen many videos and there's a bunch of different campaigns where bullying happens and um, in schools with nine-year-olds, 11-year-olds, and they kind of get bullied so much to the point where they end up committing suicide. That's something that we definitely want to put it into and, and I think it's devastating. You know, lots of people care about these issues. They care about domestic violence. They care about sexual assault. But there may be no way for them to sort of stand up and lead and be part of the solution to speak out. And I think that's what MAV really is about, allowing male athletes in this case the opportunity to be part of that. I feel like this can kind of be a contagious thing as far as preventing situations like bullying happen on campuses. And I kind of hope that we can, you know, reach out to more schools and whatnot because I feel like the more we reach out to high schools before they get onto that college campus, it's something that will kind of set that image in their head of preventing a situation like bullying happening. Our role, we want to just kind of show the community and show um, 
people in the country that, you know, everyone's equal and everyone needs to be treated with that respect. That's kind of the importance for us. Welcome back to the Black Bear Insider. Dan Collins, very gracious with his time this week. Not only did he stop by for an interview on the Insider, but we got up early and joined him in the film room. He says it's the preparation that leads to wins. Film, films uh, helps us a crazy amount, honestly. I mean, just for me, watching, my, you know, watching myself, every, you know, every rep you can, you can get better, and everyone says that. Like, it's really true. Because you see like little, like little things, like uh, Coach always talks about like my first step being too big on my drop and you know, like, I'm trying to fix that right now. So you know, just, just seeing those things, those little uh, you know, tendencies you have as a player and those little technique things like trying to stay sound in your technique, uh, it helps you out tremendously like on game day when you can you know, concentrate on you know, the stuff in practice and really focus like after practice on watching the film and see if you, you, know, you did it right. First thing we, uh, we do is we key it up. So this play's going to the left. We'll key up uh, this guy right here because he's the most dangerous threat in the front. That's where we're going, so we want to get him blocked. So right here, I take a drop, keep my eyes down the field on the safety, see what they're doing, make sure no, nobody's blitzing or coming through the, uh, on the, off the edge. They're not bringing a blitz here, so they all get depth and they drop into the coverage. Uh, we block them up pretty good here by the wide receivers come in and crash and block these guys and then our O-line will get out and block these safeties and corners. During the, during game weeks and stuff like that, we'll come in and obviously this is our, our defense, but for other defenses, we'll have to come in and break down you know, a couple, for a couple hours on Sundays of, you know, what, what other teams are doing as far as, you know, different tendencies and stuff like that. Like, the, our defense, you know, will play mostly, you know, certain co these certain coverages. But other teams will play a mixture of, you know, a bunch of different stuff. Film isn't the only interesting thing to be watching here in Orono these days. Many teams in action as the fall sports are fully underway, and you've got some winter sports getting ready to fire up. In fact, men's and women's ice hockey already underway. With that in mind, here's a look at the upcoming schedule. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode of the Black Bear Insider. Thank you very much for joining us. If you want more information about your favorite teams, go to goblackbears.com. Until we see you again, we will say, Go Black Bears!